the frustration of a synthetic voice. A reality for many who can only speak through computers. My voice isn't me. It sounds like a robot. Now, researchers creating sounds that capture individual personalities. <laughs> How old you look new? And preserving a voice for those facing a cruel loss. What about your speech? My tongue's starting to twitch. For those in need, new voice technologies that offer the sweet sounds of success. It is spunky. Yeah, like you. <laughs> this is Techno, a show about innovations that can change lives. Genetically modified food. We're going to explore the intersection of hardware and humanity, but we're doing it in a unique way. <laughs> this is a show about science by scientists. Techno investigates giving voice to the voiceless. Hey guys, welcome to Techno. I'm Phil Torres. Joining me today, Lindsay Moran and Kara Santa Maria. Now guys, when you meet someone new, they will often make immediate decisions about who you are based upon your general appearance and what your face looks like and what you're wearing, but also on the sound of your voice. It's true, and you know, what a lot of people don't realize is that there are tens of millions of people who either can't speak or have limited speech. Two and a half million of them are right here in the United States. And of those two and a half million, 40% use some kind of text-to-speech computer program to be able to communicate. But the problem with that is they all sound pretty much alike. So I visited a speech scientist in Boston who's developed a technology that can change all that. At the Young's home in Lowell, Massachusetts, this holiday season was a turning point. That's because 16-year-old Sarah Young was about to get a gift like no other. Her very own voice. She's been known as Sassy Sarah. She's very outgoing and happy and just joyful. Sarah was born with cerebral palsy, leaving her unable to speak. But she and her mom, Amy Young, have plenty to say. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah. I am 16. Sarah talks mostly through a text-to-speech app on her computer. I use Adobe's the eye for voice output. It has eye gaze so I can select a letter or word by looking at the screen. The computerized voice Sarah uses is named Heather, and it's standard equipment. Why was the Heather voice inappropriate for Sarah? It definitely had an older tone to it, speaking in this fully formed female adult voice with a very digital sound to it. It was kind of funny, like weird hearing it to an unfamiliar listener, kind of became white noise. And the voice isn't Sarah's alone. And you'd like hear it and think, oh, Sarah's not here. And then you turn around, it was somebody else, you know, from school or someone else with that voice. My name is Maeve. I am nine years old. If you think that Maeve Flack sounds a lot like Sarah, you're right. It's because they both use the Heather voice. My voice isn't me. It sounds like a robot. Maeve's parents, Carol and Paul Flack, completely agree. She doesn't have a voice that sounds like her. You see her eyes, you see her smile, the way she moves and looks at you, you get so much from her. It's not her own personality. And no matter how you change that voice, even the, the tempo of the voice or the speed, it's still an adult voice. Do you want your own voice, Maeve? Yes. What do you think having your own voice will do for you? It would be cool, and I'll sound like a kid. Creating a viable way to build unique voices for those unable to speak is the brainchild of speech scientist Rupal Patel, founder and CEO of Vocal ID. We're going to go back in that booth and we're going to have you say some vowels just like you did last time. Like, ah, uh, can you try that now? Uh... That was beautiful. What we're doing at Vocal ID is we're taking a tiny sample of someone's voice and then hours of someone else's voice. Let's do it another time. Let's do it another time. And we're trying to make it sound like the person who we have a tiny sample from. That's the scientific challenge. How are you? How are you? With thousands of English-speaking donors from around the world, Rupal and Jeff Meltzner, the Director of Research and Technology, are creating the voices. Can you kind of walk 
us through how a voice is made. Yeah, this is Sarah here. You know, this is an example of what she gave us. <gasps> so right. that's Sarah's, that's Sarah's natural voice. voice. Yep, that's okay. her voice. When we speak, we get air in our lungs and we force it out. It goes through our trachea and hits the larynx. And in the larynx are our vocal folds or vocal cords, and those vibrate. From that produces a sound, and then that excites your vocal tract. Your throat, your mouth, your nasal passage, and it's shaped by your tongue and your lips. With Sarah, she can't properly uh, shape her vocal tract to produce speech. So what we do is that we separate the vocal tract part from her. We just grab what she's producing with her larynx. And then on the other end, we take the donor and we do the opposite. We, we toss away what's going on at the vocal cords and keep what's going on up here, what their tongue and lips are doing. Then, like an online dating service, the computer matches acoustical patterns of the donor with the vocally challenged recipient. And then we put that together digitally and then use that to train the synthesizer. When you say train the synthesizer, what do you mean by that? Are you, are you training it to say specific words or full sentences? No, actually we're training it on the different parts of speech. And up here it's just kind of recording um, which parts of speech have been captured in each sentence. These are called phonemes and that's like the basic unit of speech. Okay. And in English there are about 40, I think. And so these are just like the standard symbols that capture them. So this here um, is an I, and this here is a th sound. So if I wanted to give a voice... So this is our home page, the Vocal ID home page. And from there, you go click on give a voice. Now we calibrate it so that everyone has a good level. Okay. So I'll, you can say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. All right, so we're ready to record. And then, so I'll hit record. You can speak okay. if you want. Every now and then, you surprise me. Okay, we stop, and then we play. Every now and then, you surprise me. A full donation runs 3,500 sentences, about four hours, to capture all the possible sounds needed for speech. Let's do it another time. Let's do it another time. 2,000 miles from Sarah down in Austin, Texas, 16-year-old Leah Weiss was sporadically donating her voice. Then she got an email from Vocal ID. They basically said, we found a match for your voice. I actually um, printed out Sarah's picture. It's right here. And I, uh, I hung it up on my bulletin board to remind me to keep donating. This is what they sent me in the email knowing that there was a real person on the other end of this definitely motivated me to get that done and I did get it done by the end of November and lo and behold, Sarah's voice is now with her. Yay. And when Techno returns... Hello, people. Hi. Hi, Sarah, how are you? After years of hearing Heather, Sarah is finally going to get a voice of her very own. How do you feel about getting rid of Heather? I'm glad to trade in Heather. Bye-bye. <laughs> Out with the old and with the new. We want to hear what you think about these stories. Join the conversation by following us on Twitter and at aljazeera.com slash techno. Hi. Hello. Hi. This is a big day for Sarah Young, a spirited 16-year-old with cerebral palsy. A big day, too, for the team at Vocal ID. Speech scientist Rupal Patel and developer Jeff Meltzner big because they're giving Sarah a voice of her very own. A voice they created. How do you feel about getting rid of Heather? I'm glad to trade in Heather. Bye bye. <laughs> Out with the old and with the new. Until now, Sarah spoke with a Heather voice. The standardized choice from her text-to-speech computer program, used by tens of thousands of disabled talkers. How did you come up with the idea for building voices? It was in 2002, I was at a conference in Denmark. So I saw a little girl and a grown man having a conversation using different assistive devices, but the exact same voice. And when I looked around, I kind of saw that happening all around me. What's groundbreaking about Sarah's synthesized voice is that it's unique, mixing the donor speech with the acoustic properties of the few sounds Sarah can make to blend a voice that captures Sarah's personality. Is there any artistry or psychology involved in creating a voice? Yeah, I think every science has an art form to it as well. But in the case of making a custom voice, it's not only about is it understandable, it's about is it authentic, and is it does it resonate with the person using it? Do they feel like it's them? 
So Sarah, Amy, what we've done is we've gotten two voices ready for you today. And we want to play them both from this demo unit first for you. And then whichever one you choose will load onto your device. OK? So this is voice one. Or the sentence I made up. Maybe you'll like it. Hi, my name is Sarah. I am 16 years old, and I am awesome. What do you think of that voice? Do you like it? <laughs> A little bit. Here's number two. Hi, my name is Sarah. I am 16 years old, and I am awesome. <laughs> <laughs> two. Two? Oh, good. <laughs> we thought the same. What do you like about two? It is spunky. Yeah, like you. <laughs> Do you want us to load it on your device? Yeah. Do you really want to say goodbye to Heather? Yeah. Okay. So that's the next thing we get to do. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Ta -da. So how do you feel? I feel awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. There's like this goosebumpy feeling that you feel. I love how she used the word spunky. Yeah. To describe the voice because yeah. she seems spunky. Yeah. She is spunky. And the world needs to get to see and hear her as her. Let's hear it yeah. through your voice. Your machine. Thank you, Rachel. You're the best. I knew you could do it. You knew. Oh, I'm glad you knew that. We were a little worried at times. How does it make you feel? Awesome. Awesome. Where are you most looking forward to using your voice? Surprise classmates. Yeah. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> So I was watching you as you chose your voice, and I also like the second voice, so. It is me, the sassy girl. And now you have a sassy voice to go with it. <laughs> but the real test would come the next day at the Cotting School in Lexington, Massachusetts. Good morning, Sarah. Are you excited to show your classmates your new voice? As we headed to Sarah's class, I was nervous for her because we all know how critical high school kids can be. Sarah is getting a new voice, right? Yeah. Yep. Her voice, it's individualized, so no one else has it, kind of like our voices. Yeah. yeah. Right? We, no one else has our voices. So you have the same voice as Sarah, right? E.B., could we hear your voice? Hi, my name is Elizabeth. Can someone describe what that sounds like? I mean, it sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. But, uh, Dan? Uh, like Siri on an iPhone. Like Siri on your iPhone? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Are you ready for Sarah's new voice? Yes, I am. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sassy Sarah. <laughs> How are you liking it, Sarah? Awesome. Sarah, can we hear something else? I like things that a lot of girls like, like sleepovers, chocolate, and chilling with my besties. <laughs> <laughs> With a show of hands, uh, who likes this Sarah's new voice better? Well, so, do you think her new voice is more more real? Having your own voice shows your personality. Like it does. Sarah's not the only one at school with a new voice. Only nine years old, Maeve Flack was also using the Heather voice. My voice isn't me. It sounds like a robot. Maeve's sister made the voice. I gave the man my coins. The first thing I want to hear me say with her new voice is, I love you, Aaron. And Maeve's dad knew what he wanted to hear. I love you, Daddy. <laughs> and I would love to hear that in a voice that I recognize as Maeve's. You're so sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hi, Maeve. I'm Lindsay. Maeve, you've had your new voice for about a week now, I think. Tell me what you think of it. I really like my new special voice. I can talk to everyone. Everyone at school was so excited to hear my voice today. I heard your dad say that he was really looking forward to hearing you tell him that you loved him using your new voice. So, have you done that yet? Kind of. <laughs> kind of? <laughs> Why is having a unique voice so important? 
Well, each of us has a unique voice. It makes us human. We make judgments about people based on their voice. And so I feel like it's very important for people who don't speak and who have devices to talk to have that same ability to project who they are and to be known as people and not just robots that talk. I hope that I helped you out. Peace, Dio. You know, that was such an incredible piece, and it, and it really shows you the value of, of donating what you have. And you often think about blood donation or bone marrow donation. You never really think about voice donation. I don't even think we think about how important a voice is. And one of the most moving moments for me of doing this story was watching Sarah debut her voice for her classmates and having her classmates discuss how important it was for each of them to have a unique voice, particularly for people with limited speech. They all cited having your own voice as a way not only to communicate, but to be able to defend for yourself, speak for yourself. So it's really such an important part of our whole personalities that we don't even really think about that much. Yeah, I mean, I guess your voice is your number one advocate. So especially within this disability community, how feasible is this? Is it accessible at all? Is it expensive? Right now, it is expensive. It's about $1,250 to develop a voice through Vocal ID. But the hope of the company is to make it cheaper, to make it more accessible, and potentially to be covered by health insurance. Now, Lindsay, what I think is interesting with your story, yours is about improving upon the past conditions. Kara, you have a story for us that's about preparing for the future. What if you knew that you were going to lose your voice? How would you be able to preserve it so that you could communicate after it was long gone? We'll learn all about that coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to Techno. I'm Phil Torres with Lindsay Moran and Cara Santa Maria. Now, Lindsay, in your piece, we met one of millions of people who have a limited ability to speak, and technology is there to, to help them. Cara, in your case, you're about to tell us about somebody who knows that in the future, they're going to lose their voice. Yeah, it's a tough position to be in. Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS, maybe throat cancer. There are a lot of degenerative conditions in which you know you're going to lose your voice. And a new program called My Own Voice helps you kind of capture the essence of your voice so that your unique characteristics shine through. Let's check it out. I was diagnosed officially in July of 2014 with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. 31-year-old Angelina Fanus is a reporter for Vice Media. In the simplest terms, you completely lose all function, but you feel everything, and you're aware of everything. So it's like getting trapped into quicksand and losing a little bit of yourself every day. What kinds of symptoms are you dealing with? Now I've lost most of my fine motor skills. It's almost impossible to type. That's frustrating. Perhaps the most cruel loss, the ability to speak. What about your speech? I do notice that my tongue's starting to twitch, which is a sign that, you know, the muscle is looking for that signal from the brain and it's not getting it. How would you describe your voice now? I was born in Egypt. When I came to the U.S., I learned English watching TV, the, specifically The Simpsons, with the closed captioning. My speech is probably just, just run-of-the-mill, Midwest, what you hear on TV. Kill the only guys you have left. Are you trying to get through the day with less sleep? To prepare for the inevitable silence, Angelina is recording the 1,500 sentences for a revolutionary text-to-speech program called My Own Voice. It creates a synthetic voice that will capture the essence of her speech. Why did you think that that would be a good idea? Actually, at first I didn't think it was a good idea. Could you write another script for us? your voice and how you communicate and the cadence in which you say sentences. I'm going to completely boost that. So that's why I can't be excited about a robot voice. His reaction to the article? Yay, now I'm actually done. That's exciting. Maggie Mahoney is an assistive technology speech specialist who's evaluating my own voice. A choice of shoes to wear. He's big the way water buffalo are big. 
<laughs> so what I love is that the sentences literally make no sense. No. Because with these phrases, they're getting all of those sounds that they need. It really builds the base of the voice on the grammatical rules uh, and the pronunciations. But you'll never hear these sentences again. The software is going to take all the sounds and chunk them all out. Vincent Poggle, the head of research at Acapella, the Belgian company that designed My Own Voice, explains how it's done. Let's take the word impressive. Impressive. It's made of different chunks that are glued all together. Imp actually comes from the word impossible. impossible. The second chunk comes from the word president. president. And if I take the last chunk, it comes from the word detective. detective. Glued all together, those sounds of English are going to create the word impressive. An ocean away from a cappella in Venice Beach, California, Angelina's ready to hear her synthetic stand-in. Let's see what robot me sounds like. Okay, so the sentence I typed in was, I came here expecting cupcakes. I have very little expectations for this. I came here expecting cupcakes. <gasps> That's kind of creepy. <laughs> Because it sounds just like me, except like, you know, the cadence is a little bit off, but the actual tone is exactly like me. Then Angelina tried another sentence. This will say, hello, I'm Angelina, and this is my robot voice. Hello, I'm Angelina, and this is my robot voice. Yeah, it sounds a little awkward. It sounds like I turned into a robot. I also wanted to hear Robot Me, although I only recorded about half the required sentences. And as a refugee from college, oops, I screwed that up. <laughs> we'll try that one again. So the following week, when I logged in to get my voice, my expectations were low. My dog's name is Killer, and I'm going to call him. Killer, here boy, come to your mama. Killer, he's not impressed. I don't think he's coming. Killer! Come here, baby boy. Oh, he doesn't come when I call him either. Killer! So a lot of people don't realize that actually the first synthetic voice was made for Stephen Hawking by IBM. So that kind of robotic voice that we're used to hearing, it's... In some ways, we identify with him, but not everybody would necessarily want to sound like Stephen Hawking, as brilliant as he is, especially if you're a woman. Or even like Heather, which is the, the synthetic voice that most female users have right now, because then you just sound like everyone else. I think it'll be interesting to see where this technology goes, because even in the cases of Sarah and Maeve, now they have their own unique voices, but they're appropriate to a nine-year-old girl and a 16-year-old girl. So what's going to happen when they age out of those voices? And, you know, this idea of voice donation, of blending the sounds you can make with a donated voice, or voice banking, this is a technology that's existed for a while. It's amazing, but... I don't know if the technology is quite there yet. You no, know, to have your own voice, there's a lot that goes into it. It's the size of your lungs, it's the shape of your throat, your, the muscles in your tongue and your face. All of these things are quite complex. So it, it is understandable at this point that a software, this synthetic thing that is not a, a human, it's, it struggles to sound exactly like us and to sound natural. Maybe 1,500 sentences isn't enough. Maybe what we could be doing in the future is taking every recording we've ever had and blending it into a voice to use for posterity. That's a cool thing about living with modern technology. There are recordings of everybody because we use our phones. You know, here on the show, we've met people, like in this case, who are trying to make life with these conditions better. We've also met scientists and innovators who are trying to cure these conditions. So there's really two battlefronts here. Really interesting stuff today, guys. Thank you for your stories. That's it for this episode of Techno. We'll see you next time. Dive deep into these stories and go behind the scenes at aljazeera.com slash techno. Follow our expert contributors on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and more.